Hi, my name is Rick and this is my story. It starts in my childhood house in Holloway Road, Brunswick, Melbourne, uh, 1952 to 1969. The back wall of our place was the Gattic Foundry Wall. And at the end of the street was a deep hollow of Holloway Road, clay pit, then in our time being turned into a tip. And trailer loads of coking coal were delivered to the Gattic via an easement next door to our house. Very heavy polluting industry, six kilometres from the Melbourne GPO. Clothes on the line were blackened by soot. And in the front garden were some regulation roses. At the age of six, I was lured already into the magic of plants, despite the grimy realities around me. And my plan was to set up a wood fire under a drum to boil those rose petals to make a rainbow paint. And despite having a fire plan, I distinctly remember the hose at the ready, that project was nixed. I did, however, later, was probably about 14 then, distill lavender oil with uh, a home chemistry kit. And so from that inner city house, we often visited our Catalan market gardener grandfather at his place on the Mooney Ponds Creek. So he was growing fennel and other leafy veggies on the terraces down to the creek, uh, above which there were rows of tomatoes, uh, flood irrigated, and that garden was bounded by almond trees, and there was an apricot tree there planted by my father's childhood pet cockatoo. Uh, it was an introduction to permaculture, uh, before that was a word, I think. And the imprint of this gardening uh, and his gardening took deep root in me in our new house, which was then built on his old garden. Uh, I continued in a small way with his very methods with the very seeds from his tomatoes. And some 50 years later, I visited his village on the Mediterranean, north of Barcelona. And of course, the gardens in that village were so familiar to me. In high school, we had a French teacher, uh, Monsieur Philippe Sambain, and he was a carpenter. Uh, as if by magic, we transported ourselves for many holidays from our gritty school in North Fitzroy to the Victorian high country and bushwalked all over that country in the, I know it's a cliche, but cathedral-like forests uh, led by genuinely orienteering teachers. It was like Outward Bound by another name. Uh, later as a young man in New Guinea, I lived in the jungles of the Prince Alexander Mountains with outstations from the heights of Mount Turu to ones on the mighty Sepik. Uh, in Chicago, I gardened in community gardens and traveled at all times of the year to fens and forests, rivers and lakes, frozen and not, learning all the while. All of these experiences I found to be uh, poetic, mysterious and tremendous, serendipitous, enlightening and bespeaking of a dancing God. It is no wonder, I think, paradise uh, and gardens and water are linked in many religions and no wonder care for creation and joy and mercy and love and justice are connected by Pope Francis. They are well captured by the title uh, and St Francis' song of praise for Brother, Son and Sister Moon, Praise Be, that is Laudato Si. The word connected, be it inter or disconnected as well, occurs 14 times in Pope Francis's encyclical on care for our common home. I feel with my lived experience uh, that I am a natural candidate for understanding the radical shift Pope Francis wants us to take in our philosophy, psychology and theology. I think he wants us to grasp that our common home is our ecology and it needs placing front and centre in our God story. I do think we Westerners in particular need an ecological conversion to arrive at the place many indigenous peoples have never left, that of connectedness with creation, which has not only its own intrinsic value, but is key for our survival. When I think about places of gardening, be they Melbourne, Chicago, Brisbane, uh, and about indigenous intelligence of land, and now my sons Matthew and grandchild Paddy, 
uh, I think not only about memory and landscape, but of uh, identity and deep sensitivity to the visible, the, the light, the dry, the rain above the ground, and to the invisible, uh, the soil, the chemistry, the seeds, and the dark below the ground. Life, love, light, God, larger than us, uh, weaves us, it leans into us, it finds us to co-create and care. Commitment to the visible and seasonal changes matters. Commitment to the invisible and the deep listening to the earth matters even more. Through my garden and my work, I'm always looking for ways to co-create with the Creator in ways that are sustainable and that care for our wondrous and beautiful home, the earth, uh, that God has put us in.